Absolutely. Uh, trading income is back first on the historical core uh, cash equity trading business, which is up 13%. But what is quite uh, impressive is the, the strength of our diversified trading businesses. Our fixed income trading business is up by 40%. Or uh, um, forex uh, trading business is up 28%. Or the volumes of our commodities trading business is up 40%. The power and electricity trading business of Euronext is up 30%. So we have a very powerful diversified business, which allows us to offset strengths and weaknesses in the various asset classes traded on Euronext platforms. Yeah, and, and part of that diversification, I mean, you've always spoken about uh, CSD, energy, non-equity trading, even fixed income. Uh, what's the primary focus area amongst that diversification? Well, uh, as you said, uh, we have a double diversification strategy, a diversification within trading revenues, and I'm, I've covered uh, the impressive uh, uh, performance of the various asset classes that are traded on your next platforms. And we have a diversification away from trading revenues, in particular into post-trade, into uh, corporate services, into listing innovation, into um, um, all sorts of uh, uh, advanced data services. And, and that uh, continuous effort to, to diversify the way for trading revenues is what I refer to as the double diversification ambition. Um, good to see you, Stefan. Always enjoy our, our conversations as well. A um, lot of commentary about um, why European companies would want to list in Europe, why London isn't quite as attractive as it used to be on a global basis, why there is a de-equitization going on um, in Europe with European companies just not being attracted onto the bourses. Um, do you think that trend is overstated? And actually, do you think it, there's anything you can do to stop that trend if it is still constant? I think there are two very fundamental different situations. There is a specific London problem, and there is a, a different situation in the, in the continental Europe and the Republic of Ireland. Uh, um, the reality is that uh, uh, Euronex has created now for equity listing and equity trading, the, the leading platform in Europe, which is new. 25% uh, of the shares traded in Europe are traded on Euronex platforms. Uh, we trade every day between 10 and 12 billion euro of average daily volumes. This is approximately twice the volumes traded on equity markets in, in London. Uh, the aggregate market capitalizations of companies listed on Euronex single market is around 7 trillion euro, which is approximately twice the size of the aggregate market capitalization is London. So the reality is that the liquidity of the equity markets in Europe is now on Euronex, which is new because 10 years ago, the dominant equity market in Europe was London because 10 years ago, London was the largest financial center of the European Union and everybody liked it. Now London is the largest financial center of the United Kingdom with global ambitions. So the reality is that liquidity goes to liquidity, listing goes to the deepest liquidity markets. And today, year to date, we have, uh, I think, uh, something like 28 uh, IPOs on, on Euronex for something like uh, 14, I think, in, in London. So, uh, and, and, uh, so it, the reality is that international listings come to Euronex markets. So that's, in London, there is a specific situation, which is the shrinking of the equity markets. Then you have large corporates that look for valuations, better valuations. And some of them are looking at higher multiples uh, in, in London, uh, sorry, in, in New York, uh, in, in certain segments. But in reality, it's a very discrete uh, number of companies that we are talking about. Now, beyond that, what is important in your question is the question not of listing in New York, London, or your next, which is equitizations of companies and how to unleash equity uh, and how to make European equity great again to, but, to make sure that the most Stephane, parts of the European savings goes to equity. 